Hey, this is Oren Zucker on behalf of Dan Eberts. Welcome to the very first official quick overview of our new script, Wind. When we started this project, we were looking for a way to make multiple layers blow around like leaves in the wind, much like you would do in a particle system or effectors in a 3D program, but without having to enter layers in dialog boxes or pre-compose anything. You had to be able to use any kind of layer and use 200 layers as easily as you would two layers. What we ended up with was a strange null-based turbulence simulator. It was able to create beautiful wind effects, but we discovered it could also do a lot more. The simplest way to explain it is for me to just pull back the curtain and show you how to build a wind rig manually. This will be very similar to what the script does automatically, multiplied by however many active layers you have. When you click Apply, wind will automatically center the object's anchor point and parent it to a null rasterize it if necessary, and make them both 3D. The first thing it's going to do is to animate the direction the wind is blowing. This is the function of the null's anchor point, not position. The number of pixels moved is controlled by the distance slider, and how quickly it gets there is controlled by the speed slider. Now we're going to introduce a rotation, or spin, to the wind effect. This will always be along the same axis as the direction, so these two are connected. If the wind is blowing along the x-axis, which is left or right, then the spin axis is the x, randomly clockwise or counterclockwise. The two unused null rotation axes are used for the chaos settings. These are pretty subtle, so you don't need a lot to introduce an asymmetric off-kilter motion to the wind effect. The rest of the settings are applied to the object layer itself, not the null. First is flutter which is a random combination of X, Y, and Z rotations. Next is Drift, and this animates the position of the object. It's a secondary force and will kick in a bit later in the move. It can work on any axis of the object layer, and unlike Direction, it has no impact on Spin or any other setting. The Transition section is applied to either the Scale or the Opacity settings of the object layer, or both. You can use this as a way to introduce or get rid of the object layer if they're not going off screen. Lastly is variation, and this randomizes the other sliders in the UI. The more variation, the more scattered the wind effect will be. Okay, so let's do a build using the default settings. I'm using a bunch of text broken down into letters that I've made in Illustrator. I've locked the background because I don't want it involved and I've queued up the timeline to where I want the animation to start. I'll let this go in real time. And we get this. Now, if we look at the timeline, all that's visible is the wind master, since both hide checkboxes are active. This is where you can do all the global transformations. Scale, rotate, position, whatever you'd like it'll affect the entire animation. I'll unshy the comp so you can see all the layers. If I scroll down to the bottom, you'll find the original layers. They're locked and their video switches are off. When you click Restore, all these layers are reset to the original condition and the layers that Wind created are deleted. The markers on the nulls are the trigger points for the animation. You can offset these manually by sliding the markers or you can offset the entire layer by selecting them and using Sequence Layers in Animation Assistant. And that's it. The basics of wind. There's a bunch of presets to get you started. You can create some pretty cool animations from any kind or any number of layers very quickly with or without turbulence settings. Hope you like wind and please send us some samples to post. On behalf of Dan Eberts, this is Oren Zucker and thanks for watching.